And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, there are just 12 days left to stop the Obama Clinton machine, and WikiLeaks has dropped a major bombshell that could dramatically change this race. A newly released email details how Bill Clinton used his family foundation to line his own pockets with tens and tens of millions of dollars. And with all the details tonight, is Fox's own Ed Henry. Pretty big blockbuster tonight, Ed. It really is, Sean, and it follows the fact that Fox News first broke the story that Hillary Clinton herself had solicited a $12 million donation for the Clinton Foundation from the King of Morocco, and Huma Abedin suggested in an email that it was pay to play by bluntly declaring the money was given on the condition that Clinton had to go to Morocco to host a foundation event and give a speech. She later backed out, but Bill and Chelsea Clinton went in her place. The New York Times finally today following up on that story a week later. But as you say, more damaging emails from former Clinton intimate Doug Ban. He lays out how Bill Clinton lined his own pockets by steering donors for the Clinton Foundation to hire him for speeches and consulting. Look at this 2011 memo revealing the plan, quote, yielded more than $30 million for him personally, with $66 million to be paid out in years ahead. Another incredible revelation we learned today, even the top two officials in Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign were kept in the dark on the full extent of her email scandal by either the candidate herself or others in the inner circle. When the story first broke in the New York Times, campaign chair John Podesta wrote to Robbie Mook, quote, did you have any idea of the depth of this story? Mook, the campaign's manager, responded, nope, we brought up the existence of emails and research this summer, but we're told that everything was taken care of. That came as the New York Times posted its very first story, March 2nd, 2015 all about Clinton's use of a personal email account as Secretary of State, a dramatic sign that the potential next commander-in-chief shares critical information with only a couple of trusted advisors like Aberdeen. All of this secretiveness that was too much for liberal activists near attendant. She wrote to John Podesta about the email scandal in the summer of 2015, quote, it's like the whole thing is bleeping insane. And that honest submission comes at the same time, remember, Clinton herself and her aides in the summer of 2015 kept telling us this is not a big deal. There's nothing to see here. Move on. Even near attended, one of her top advisors was saying it was insane, Sean. Yeah, and by the way, we got to remember your question. You said, did you have your server wiped clean? And she goes, Ed, you mean like with a cloth? <laughs> yeah. Well, we now know it was bleach bit uh, and acid wash. Thousands of emails. But, but I want to go, this whole thing is bleeping insane. The one individual mm -hmm. you quoted is saying, also, yeah. I was told everything was taken care of. Being taken right. care of kind of fits into the bleach bit narrative that they wiped it out, that they eliminated it and got rid of the problem. Isn't that almost an admission potentially of guilt? Because if, correct me if I'm wrong, weren't yeah. those emails all subpoenaed by that point? Well, they were subpoenaed uh, right after that point, we should say. So Robbie Mook, the campaign manager, having this conversation as the New York Times broke the story March 2nd, uh, Trey Gowdy issued the subpoena, I believe, two days later, March 4th, 2015. So, yes, it's happening all in the same time period, but maybe he was referring to the idea that he went to Hillary Clinton, what's going on with the emails, and she said, oh, everything's fine, or maybe Huma Abedin said that. We simply don't know. Uh, did they uh, suggest they deleted them? We don't know. Did they suggest that maybe, look, there's nothing to see here. It's not a big deal, Robbie. Just don't worry about it. And then he moved on to other issues. It shows you, though, that Hillary Clinton wasn't just dodging the press. She was maybe dodging her own campaign manager. When someone does that, it suggests they have something to hide. You know, there's also some internal infighting here. Longtime Clinton aide, the, the head of the Clinton Foundation, this guy Doug Band, he's yeah. responding to Hillary Clinton, I'm sorry, Chelsea Clinton's suggestion mm -hmm. that they were making money off yeah. their proximity to Bill Clinton. He writes a pretty fierce email back. Now, we're talking about $116 million that he's lined yeah. up on the books for the Clintons. That's a lot of money. Sure. You're not going to believe these details. Chelsea Clinton, I think, was the good actor in all I this. Agree. When you I look actually at the agree facts, with that. Because, right, she was blowing the whistle and saying, look, there's problems with this foundation. What's significant, number one, is they keep saying at the foundation, it's conservative critics beating up on the foundation. Chelsea Clinton was yeah. saying there were problems there. That's significant, number one. Number two, she brought in a, an independent law firm to do an audit that suggested donors expect a quid pro quo. That's what the law firm found. Again, not conservative critics. Uh, and finally, the details of this, Doug Band, Chelsea Clinton went after him and said, look, I'm hearing speculation that Doug Band is trading on my father's name, Bill Clinton's name, uh, for Teneo, his consulting company. Doug Band denies that, says he didn't make any money uh, off of Bill Clinton on Teneo. We'll, we'll leave that aside for a second. The bottom line is Doug Band fired back with the memo you mentioned about all the money, and he had another email we've gone through where Doug Band said Bill Clinton is being paid by three different sponsors of the Clinton Foundation, so so he's the one with <laughs> conflicts of interest. And he said, Bill Clinton has taken big personal gifts 
that are now in the Clinton home, either and, in Chappaqua or Washington, and the home, by the way, of Hillary Clinton, the potential next president. That's oh, a big and, story. And he's mad he didn't get a, a cut of that. He complained <laughs> back. All right. Uh, Ed Henry, thanks so much for being Good with us. You. All right. RNC Chairman Reince Priebus is reacting, reacting to these new revelations about how Bill Clinton is making all of this money by saying, quote, this memo is the smoking gun for how the Clintons use their foundation to create a massive for-profit, paid-speaking, consulting business all to enrich themselves. Here with Reaction, the author of the bestseller, Treason, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich is with us. We're talking about $116 million. I want to put these revelations next to an AP story that said, remember, 55% of individuals that got to see Hillary when she was Secretary of State were either donors or people committing money to the foundation. Now, add that to the Haiti story. They raised this money, separate list for foundation donors and friends of Bill so they can cash in on the contracts after 150,000 people died and they raised money and they would be first in line to make more money so they can funnel it back to the Clinton Foundation. How does this not get picked up? How is this not Watergate in the minds of the rest of the media? Well, it's beginning to get picked up. You know, I think uh, somebody pointed out that on Morning Joe, they spent 13 minutes attacking the Clintons this morning. Now that's that's unheard of. That's that's a breakdown in elite media discipline that is hard to imagine. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see by tomorrow where's the Washington Post, where's the New York Times. This stuff's getting so big and smelling so bad that I think they're going to have a very hard time hiding from it. Uh, you know, if the Federal Bureau of Investigation was still a law enforcement agency, uh, we would have a grand jury and paneled. Uh, to be taking testimony right now and not negotiating, but issuing subpoenas. Well, wait a minute. I beg to differ. Uh, oh, no, they're the, a law enforcement organization because if you did it, they would have impaneled that grand jury by now. If I did it, that grand jury would be impaneled right now. Therein lies a big problem we have with our Justice Department. Right, because, because that's not law enforcement. That's selective prosecution. Law enforcement says that all of us are under the law. All of us have to obey the law. All of us have to face the same consequences. We know, we know for a fact from all this stuff that you, you have uh, the head of the Clinton campaign, John Podesta, going off to dinner with the Justice Department. You have weird negotiations with various Clinton officials, things nobody gets from the FBI. You have the president of the former president and the attorney general meeting on a plane in secret the same week they're going to interrogate Hillary. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that in a place like Venezuela, you would understand because they don't have the rule of law. But what we're seeing right now, and WikiLeaks in this sense, is ripping the scar off of the largest amount of corruption in American history. This, this beats any prior corruption scandal I know of, including uh, the 1868 the period where Grant was president, including the Harding administration, I mean, including some of the things that happened under Truman, none of those things are like this. This is the largest scandal affecting a senior American politician, I think, in the history of the United States. And it's, as you yourself just pointed out, you have Hillary Clinton clearly trading on the office of Secretary of State in a way which has to be, a, I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer, but my guess is you've got probably 60 or 70 counts against her just in terms of scheduling people uh, to and come into her And yet she could be elected president. Who they knew and yet, according money. to polls, she's she in this be. race. In 12 days, she could possibly win right. this election. What does that say? That's right. Well, it says that our country is a, is a culture in crisis. Our country has got to decide, does the rule of law apply to everyone, or are we now going to be a country where some people are above the law, and no matter how corrupt they are, you know, putting Bill Clinton back in the White House, given everything we're learning, uh, I think would be almost a sign of sickness. And I, I personally, this is why I've always told you I thought that she would lose and Donald Trump would win. In the end, I don't think the majority of American people are going to put somebody who is a liar and a crook in the White House. I, I, I just I have enough faith in the American people that when they get down to voting, and I've had several people say this to me this week, that when they got right down to it, they simply couldn't vote for her.